Hey, Rich families. I hope you guys are enjoying this awesome weather. I know it was a little bit cooler uh, this last week, but I actually kind of enjoy that a little bit more. Amanda, how has your summer been so far? Oh, we've been having so much fun playing outside, making memories, all sorts of fun things. What about you? Oh, for me, um, we've been doing some camping. Um, we're finishing up the baseball seasons and it just seems so fun. It's just fun to just get out and hang and have time, uh, have fun with my family. Um, there are a couple things that are coming up that we just want to let you families that you uh, can know about and just be in discussion with your kids about. And one of those things uh, is baptism. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about that. We do have uh, online and virtual baptisms happening on July 31st, but it doesn't mean that you have to uh, get your kid all ready to be baptized on that day. Uh, but we want you to start having those discussions. If your kid is um, thinking about and asking questions about Jesus and faith, uh, we do have some resources for you on this. It's called Start Here. Uh, and we have done in-person classes in the past, but really what's going to be exciting is this year, new, we are going to have a recorded video uh, that you can be able to go online on our website uh, and you should be able to click on that and, and get into there where the Start Here will have resources and discussion guides of questions that you can do, but also... Um, just a video that will explain a little bit more about it. And did you have anything to add? I did. All right. I know that, I don't say it too loudly, but school is going to be starting soon. Uh, but if you have a forecare that is going into kindergarten, we also have a fun event called Kindergarten Kickstart. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that we can you can find more information on our resources page. And that will be August 29th that we are going to do it right. in person. I have a bad memory. Thanks for That's all right. Sure. That's why we, we work together and we make it happen. So enjoy your videos today and your dancing uh, and your discussions that you have uh, on faith. So take care and have a great week. Family. Have a great summer. Bye. Bye.
What's up, people? I'm Graham, and I'll be your DJ for today's experience as we try to get to the bottom of this thing called confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. I know I need confidence, especially when I'm about to do something I've never done before, like DJ. But don't worry, I'll be ready as soon as I gear up. Let's do this. Now I'm ready. Who's up for some music? Hit it. Oh, sounds like I really, sounds like I really, sounds like I really, I really scratched it good, but no scratches on me. Not with my DJ armor on, I'm standing strong. In today's story, you'll hear about a different kind of armor that will help you stand strong. Now, let me play us out. <laughs> I think I've invented a new dance. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, Chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. The Apostle Paul spent his last two years as a prisoner in Rome. But even though he wasn't free to travel, he shared God's truth with everyone who visited and often wrote strong letters to the churches he had started. One of those letters went to the believers at the church in Ephesus. Finally, let the Lord make you strong. Depend on his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor, then you can remain strong against the devil's evil plans. Now, armor isn't something we see every day. Maybe you think of this, or this. But remember, Paul wrote this letter when he was in prison. In the book of Acts, his friend Luke explains, When we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself, but a soldier guarded him. This means that Paul was guarded by at least one Roman soldier every single hour of the day. In fact, Paul was probably even chained to that soldier. So every day, Paul had a great opportunity to study this armor in real detail. He knew that when dressed up in armor, a Roman soldier could withstand any attack by an enemy. Paul also knew that the main enemy we face isn't one we can see. Our fight is not against human beings. It is against the rulers, the authorities, and the powers of this dark world. It is against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly world. So put on all of God's armor. Evil days will come, but you will be able to stand up to anything. And after you have done everything you can, you will still be standing. See, our fight is not with human beings. Paul reminds us that the real enemy is spiritual forces of evil. Now that might sound really weird and creepy, but it's actually very simple. God has an enemy called Satan. Now we know at the end Satan is defeated, but right now Satan is trying to mess with what God loves most, people. We're fighting a battle with an enemy we can't see. And because of this, Paul says, we need a very special kind of armor. So remain strong in the faith. Put the belt of truth around your waist. A belt tied up loose clothing and held weapons, so a soldier was all ready to go. God wants us to prepare ourselves with the truth that he loves us and is always with us, and that he'll give us the wisdom to face any tough decision we have to make. Put the armor of godliness on your chest. This piece, sometimes called a breastplate, protected a soldier's heart and lungs and stomach. You know, all the important stuff. Paul says our protection is godliness. That means simply following God and what we do and say by loving God and loving others. It's our best defense against the enemy. Wear on your feet what will prepare you to tell the good news of peace. Check these out. Kind of sandals, kind of cleats. Roman soldiers actually wore shoes with nails sticking out of the bottom so they could get a good grip on rough and rocky roads. 
Paul says the way we can get a grip is to share the message of God's peace with everybody we meet, wherever our feet will take us. Thanks to Jesus, everyone can have peace with God. Also, pick up the shield of faith. With it, you can put out all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Rejected! A Roman soldier's shield was everything. Not only could a soldier block arrows and swords and spears, but he could get right behind this and charge, pushing back the enemy. And that's exactly what strong faith in God and his promises can do for us. Maybe the enemy tries to sneak in with the thought that God doesn't love me. But you can block that right away because you know that nothing can separate you from God's love. He promises that. Or maybe you're struck with a wave of doubt that you can't make a hard choice. But you can block that when you remember that God promises to guide your steps when you trust him. Put on the helmet of salvation. A helmet protects just what you think, your head and mind. The enemy likes to sneak attack with small lies and spiraling thoughts of negativity. But if you put on the helmet of salvation, trusting in God and following Jesus, that'll protect your mind. And take the sword of the Holy Spirit. The sword is God's word. When the enemy attacks, Paul says we have a way to fight back. Our weapon is the sword of God's word. Jesus himself used God's words from scripture when he was tempted by Satan. As Paul says, put on all of God's armor. Evil days will come, but you will be able to stand up to anything. And after you have done everything you can, you will still be standing. When you discover God's words written down in the Bible and hold them in your head and your heart, you can stand up to any attack by the enemy. Okay, so everybody knows we're going to have trouble in this world. We're going to break bones, get splinters, we're gonna get into arguments with friends and family members. Things are going to happen. But the Apostle Paul wrote that we're also going to face troubles we can't even see. So we'd better gear up. We've gotta put on God's armor. It's not the kind of armor you can see, but it is the kind of armor that will prepare you for the troubles you don't see. With God's armor, you can be protected from things like a bad attitude or negative thoughts. It can shield you from things that can make you want to doubt what's true. Plus, Paul wrote that God has given you a weapon. It's true. Paul wrote that God's word is like a sword. When voices inside try to tell you you're not good enough or that you don't matter, your sword can help you fight back with the truth. And the truth is, you do matter. And God loves you so much that he sent Jesus to save you from your sins. So troubles will come, the ones you can see and the ones you can't. But the armor God has given you will help you stand strong through it all. That's the one thing to remember today. Use what God has given you to stand strong. Gear up. That way, whatever happens, you'll be ready. I think I make a pretty confident DJ, don't you? I gave an excellent performance on the turntable. Some might even say record-breaking, or record-scratching anyway. <laughs> I'll see you next time.